Wait, wait, we need a cheer. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah we, we have the doors open. Yeah. yeah. Let's, get, let's just look at ready, ready. Well, I'll say action. Okay, here we go. Ready? And I want you guys to go. Woo! Like that. Okay, ready? Here we go. Ready? <laughs> like that. But don't, just don't stop. Yeah, yeah. That'd be amazing, actually. Like, action, you guys. Let's. Um, we'll go for a long time and then we'll start talking. Okay, ready? Here we go. Action! Woo! I concur. Hey, I'm John D. Nillis. I am a writer and director from Montana. I'm originally from the Bitterroot. I moved to Missoula about eight years ago. I uh, love to make westerns and science fiction movies. And any time they can cross over is really exciting. I'm working on a film called Saving for the Day. It's a multi genre epic. And this is Christian. And Whoa. He is. He's in the film? Yes. I'm in the film. My name's Christian Ackerman. Some of you have seen in here that you were at my last name, so thank you for coming back. Um, I'm an actor. I'm from San Diego. I'm also a film instructor, uh, a certified film instructor in Montana, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> I teach high school kids. I'm sorry. Um, and I make movies. Yeah, I, I'm an actor. I make films just like this guy right here. And I've been here for about 16 years now, making movies and having fun with you. That's right. And some of the people on the street. In summer. Okay, exactly. <laughs> so what I thought we would do is show a, first we'd show the teaser to the film we're going to speak about. And then we're going to show a three minute clip that Christian is in. And that is a dream, it's a dream sequence, Joe's Incomplete Dream, it's called. After that we're going to talk and give some tips about uh, filmmaking, low budget filmmaking. How do you get production value when you don't have a budget? Special, a little bit of special effects, just a bit of that. Give us just a little taste of it. Oh, I have a lot of taste. So, <laughs> yeah, 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 just, yeah. just a little. And then we'll go for Q&A and just try to go through them as quick as possible. That's as many questions as possible. Okay? So we're not, I'm done talking, but I'm people to keep talking. Okay. I'll try not to be boring. No, I'm sorry. All right. I know, I'll try. Right, so we're going to dip these lights a little bit, and then we're going to show it's like we're on a movie set. It's like what we do. True. Yeah, 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 see, you can see everybody. Yeah, yeah. 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 Can we see, can we turn the house lights off? Yes, I think so. I'm gonna try it right here. Yeah, yeah, right there. Whoa, I did that one. one. Uh. Uh. Whoa, 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 sorry, I had an idea. Okay. <laughs> Being a filmmaker is just like that. Okay. something I'd like to give you. Something that really helped me when I was your age. Will this get you really much you want out of life? Why are you showing it to me? It's yours. Why would you give me your treasure? You're asking the wrong questions. How far are you willing to go when it's in this chest? What are you going to sacrifice? Will you forge on when this and then fail? Will you run your day and nights from distant lands? Will you break the snares of ancient caverns and cursed men? Will you stumble before the enchantments of the heart? Will you crawl through fire and abomination? Will you destroy your enemies with the blade of ambition? Will you cross the infinite abyss? And even if the outcome are hopeless, will you still press on? Would 
to endure blistering hellfire and grasp the throat of the devil himself. shooting in this field and we have these actual, those guns are actually antiques. They were pretty heavy from moving around and doing a few uh, takes and uh, that was really, I had a blast. I, we were also wearing like, I think authentic, possible partial, authentic. Yeah. yeah. And it was, it was just cool uh, being a, this is a, I guess we'll talk about this part is I was 
a, a normal character, Sarge. I was the Sarge in there. Normally, I play other things like zombies. And I'm a character actor, so right. I play monsters. And I noticed too, if you saw the Star Wars scene, I'm in that too. Right. Yes. Yeah, so he's the um, I'm like Disney Pins don't sit with Thunder Trooper. Yes. I'm like <laughs> we don't have insurance for that person. Jump out that building. That's okay. right. Um, no, but no, which floor, sir? But no, that, what, it was fun making that um, switch with Andy. Um, I don't, we're, you know, we're playing. I mean, basically, you growing up, you play pretend as a kid, and then you go out on the set and you get to play pretend again as an adult and not look weird. Uh, it's a little weird, but it's okay because you say action and then cut it in the end. So I was like, we're gonna go home, can you? Um, but yeah, it was it was really fun playing with that, and then we didn't have actual uh, for that those scenes we didn't have um, uh, blanks. And yeah, like that. that was all done. That's that's all yeah, that was fun. So it was really like playing bad guys, good guys, totally. and, work. and that was a really fun, really fun time. The actors had to so that they could so they could exchange uh, fire. They had to go bang 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 yeah, bang bang bang. Yes, it was like oh, exactly. Exactly. they're not going to queue off of this one pops up and then. Should I, should I show there's like a minute and a half deconstruction, which I think it was pretty is really beneficial as far as showing you the importance of the different elements of an audio track as well as uh, visual effects. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. This is the stuff I love, special effects. Who likes special effects, right? You, you watch, yes, I'm gonna say DVD Blu-rays and you watch the extras, right? Mm -hmm. This is the stuff, if you love that, you're gonna love this. Live audio commentary. That's right. <coughs> Bill, Bill, what are you doing? Bill, come on! Get me! He's like, I built this really cool movie uh, movie set, playground. I want you to come and play. Can you be this guy? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. And, and um, we get to play in. And then also we get to build up our resume. Because of you. So I just want to thank you. So, <laughs> you so, we had a, so there's a there's a scene at the end of the sci-fi bit. Yeah. Joe goes into this bunker and he sees another chest. Sensing a theme there, right? And uh, a dark, shiny figure. Um, comes out behind him. But actually, we had to play Dark Raider. Dark the Raider. This character <laughs> might be a little too similar to another character you might have heard of. Our actor bailed out. So, what did I call you this, like an hour before we had to shoot? Yeah, I was just coming back from California. The wife's going, we need to go home and sleep, yeah, watch TV, watch some Frasier. Sorry. Um, <laughs> and John goes, Ring. Yeah, I'll be there. Can I go, please? <laughs> <laughs> and she loves me. Uh, the playground. Like, oh, yeah, that's what, yeah, I did. And, um, and I got to go play on the playground, and I got that part uh, of the Dark Raider. That's right, yeah. And we also did some other stuff. We did a lot. And it's, it's been a crazy fun time. That's it. You played about four? Yeah, I started out as a zombie. No figure. Christian is the preeminent zombie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I have a. 
Here, here's a piece. This is actually from Oh, nice. Yeah, there's a new right there. <laughs> My sweetheart. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I should make that a t-shirt. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Um, should, we, should we do some questions now? Yeah, let's do. Yeah, let's do. I and if they really don't have any, I'll make up. Something. Yeah, if you don't have questions, we, we can talk for Yes, are you? Can you tell us anything about the plot of the film? Oh, I would love to tell you about the plot. Thank you for asking me. Um, so the story follows Joe. Joe is a hermit accountant, and he's very poor, and he's waiting for life to happen to him. One day he's given a chest filled with treasure by this cryptic old timer known as the Clockmaker. And uh, the chest is accidentally locked. So Joe has to go in and spill it, like untold millions, in the $30 million games. We never really, we imply that. Um, Joe has to go on a series of adventures to find the key, and each adventure is a different genre. And that's why there are over about, over a dozen different Eventually finds the key around the neck of a beautiful young woman, and he has to choose between love and money. And um, so some of, so the interesting thing about the genres is some genres work in the waking life. So I see storytelling, the narrative is a path through a forest, and you're walking, and you you can, as long as you keep one foot on the path, you can step off as far as you can reach. But if you take two two steps, you're going to lose the audience. Meaning, I can have my main character put on a fedora and kind of act like a detective, but if actual zombies come into his waking life, the audience you're going to be a little confused, and it's not really going to work. So, so the zombie stuff, the western. The war and the sci-fi stuff, that's all in his dream. And it's all tied together. The rest of them are a little more subtle. They're not as latent as laser swords. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you set up the rules, basically. Right? Set up the rules. Yeah. And anything can happen in the dream. I was, I was just wondering about the, uh, the clip that you showed that we had dirt falling on, we had smoke going on, and I'm just so able to tell us about the setup. Yeah, we, I think you were on some dirt too, uh, but you were on camera mainly. But we, yeah, we had we had a few people. Was it we had Casey throwing? No, we had five people. People were throwing dirt on us. We had, right. <laughs> That's right. We'd I was like, me and Andy would be like, okay, we were having a blast. We didn't care. But okay. Me and Andy were having fun. I mean, all, yeah, we always had. So you'll notice. So we had actually just like. Uh, fireworks as smoke bombs. Yeah, we had and we smoke. just we lit a bunch of those. They don't last very long. Right. We had someone off screen making that happen, going this way. We made sure that uh, we were facing the sun, so that the light it backlights the smoke. It makes it look awesome. It it adds production. Value. And then we had dirt, dirt patrol. We had we had dirt patrol. We had several people. Yeah. Jenny Johnson over there was on Dirt Stroll, right. and then right. I counted one, two, three, and we threw it, and you notice the camera pans to the left when they go down. I added the shake digitally, yeah. and then we removed the chest when we come back. Right. So, okay. so that's kind of how it was, it's just, and it's just cute. It's like, okay, I say I call action, and he, he says his lines, and then it's a dance, really. I, I count down three, two, one, and they, it's as if they're hearing the shell incoming. Yep. And, uh, people know when to throw the dirt. And then we just act, we have fun, we play, like we play in the player, and it's awesome. And, yeah. And yeah. We do it a bunch of times, because I'm a perfectionist. Yeah. So, so I, everyone gets really annoyed, but I don't care. I know, I just get a workout, and it's pretty awesome. Any other questions? You guys uh, working from a set script, or are you kind of changing it up as you go along? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, We're it, um, sticking to it. That's a really good question. Yeah. Um, so we've been on this film for about six years, and. Uh, there was a, I've done four drafts, so as 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 we progressed, um, I've got new ideas, and the script is sort of it's bloated a little bit. It's gotten bigger and bigger. So all the war stuff and the western stuff, that's all in addition as of two years ago. Um, but yes, there was a set. We've always been working from a set script. That set script is always changing, all the way up to the last minute because I'm trying to make it as good as possible for the film production. So yeah, it's a living, it's like artwork or painting. You just keep on changing and changing until you get it just right. So yeah, we're not like fixated, which is nice because we get to play more and do more. Oh, yeah. yeah My opinion is that the script is as bad as the movie is ever going to be, um, but that's because I, I have more confidence in my abilities as a director than a writer. So um, I feel like whatever we get the script, we're going to make it better on the set. Yeah. And then you just, I mean, you're going to have to make it about a, a good team. I saw that. I saw that. No one else did, though. <laughs> um, you have to make it about a team. Yeah. And, like, when you bring someone like 
Christian on. He's just gung ho the whole time with a positive attitude. He's not complaining. And until I get home and I'm hungry. But he's hungry. I want food. But his wife has to do that. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's fun. It's fun doing that, and that's why I like it because too, we're not fixated. It's not Quentin Tarantino. We're stuck to the lines. We have to just kind of say we have to maybe say a key point for story wise. But it's kind of cool. He can, he even lets us on set come up with little things like, would my character do this? Can I do this? And he'll like do the John like think and grab the beard and then go okay and let us do it. And it's really fun. So we're all yeah, it is a collaboration. We're playing in your playground and you're letting us do weird things. Can I swing from the monkey bars this time? And you're like, yeah, sure. And it's really great. So it's a big collaboration. And you had a question. Uh, for the station, are you? I, I think for this we're going to do it digitally and I, I believe our, our visual effects artist is in the house. Where is she? Casey? Casey are you? Oh, oh there she is. Okay. <laughs> Casey. Yeah. So we've got a few people but I think she wants to talk to that one. Um, we are, we've got an idea for a project in the future which we'll be talking about but we want to do all models. <clears throat> So, composite. Fuck her up. but just shoot all. Right. Really? I'm not opposed to models at all. No. If it's within, I mean, if it's within our, our resources and our means and our budget, I would love to have some models. Well, yeah, like, we use that much more. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. We also need the matte paintings. So, um, yeah, digital mats. Yeah. There's, a, there's a big sequence right. that we shot. We built a 60 foot long set. It's an old roofing bridge with uh, a big cave wall. And there's all these booby traps. It's Indiana Jones kind of thing. So Joe has to make the cross, swing, dodging fire, that's where the fire comes into place. But we need, we're going to do some set extension with Matt Pitting, but make them old school looking like, sort of, it's flagrant homage to Indiana Jones. So it's got, so we've got the bridge, we've got part of the wall, and we're going to have a Matt Painter. Yes. So if you know any Matt Painter, send them my way. But we do like that mixed uh, art, like where it's digital and practical, like you guys saw when you were asking about the dirt flying and then he added in explosions and stuff. The mix is pretty cool. I think so. Yeah. Any other questions? Oh, 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 oh. Yes, and then we'll come to you in the back. Okay, for the poster, I am uh, have a few technical questions, including it looks like it's mixed with different um, effects and layers on it because it looks so clean, and yet I see an outline as well and everything like that, so graphically it was awesome. So I just have a few questions on that. Okay. Like the process being, I'm not sure if you guys know. If you have I drew it all by myself. No, I didn't draw it. Yeah, I can answer. Yeah. All right, perfect. Um, so it looks like, did you use posterization on the actual poster? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it looks like you used the posterization layer and then you added elements from the original and um, added some layer with the original and then added elements from the original and color hues. What was the process behind you? Uh, the process was I hired a guy named Dwayne Harris and he did it all. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> so, um, I can tell you that. I got Dwayne a bunch of images, and he spent a lot of time, he did a lot of different drafts, just placing people. We're going through the Drew Struzan book, obviously. Um, and um, once we got the, the pieces locked into place, and he, and he did this thing, which is the outline and coloring and all the blood we go, I added, I made it look a little more retro. I added sort of the, the folds and wrinkles and the raggedy edge. So that's something that I did. Nice. But do, all the credit goes to the way. He's the one that he's the he's the master. We should have his card out. We should um, yeah. speak to him afterwards. Yeah, the back. Uh, what kind of camera did you guys shoot on, and what, did, what program did you get it with? Great questions. We shot on the Canon 7D. So this is kind of the whole point. If we make movies, and so can you. The the digital SLRs are you can hit. I mean, you can get them for cheap these days, right? So it's not. The beautiful thing about making films now is it's democratized. You don't need huge budgets to get a good look. Um, camera sensors are bigger now, which means it gives you a shallow depth of field. So if you have a shot of Christian, the background is blurry. For decades, that was the difference between um, big boys and little boys. Um, 
And so six or seven, like six or seven years ago, when Canon released the 5D Mark II, that was a game changer and all the other cameras were all the suit. So the point, I guess the point that I want to, 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 to make really is that don't let any technical thing stop you from telling your story. And the technical things aren't even an issue anymore. If you tell an engaging story, people will listen. So, I mean, there are a couple shot on iPhones now. It doesn't even matter. So I had the camera that I could afford that was within my budget, and I went to make a movie. And everyone here can do that with probably a device they have in their pocket. Just tell a good story. We edited uh, in Adobe Premiere, and so we're using the Creative Crowd Cloud Suite, so we can use After Effects, and everything just works together nicely. Christian uses something else. You want I, to talk about yours? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm the little, I guess, rebel. I, I use Final Cut Pro still. I use Final Cut Pro X10. Some people call it X, but it's 10. Final Cut Pro 10, and I, I use that because it's cheap, and I can still get a nice picture, and I can do all these special effects, and use Mocha embedded into Final Cut Pro and do like, key framing. Any animators out here? Anybody use key framing? After Effects people out here? Great! Yeah, and so I can, yeah, Mocha's embedded it because of After Effects uses Mocha, do all, do all that stuff. And I use all that and I um, do a lot of practical effects because I did my thing before your our panel here. Um, I'm doing a lot of practical effects and doing that mix. And, um, and I use, uh, uh, not a Canon 7 d but I'll use just your uh, T3Is. Anybody have you seen those? The Canon T3I? Yeah, they, they're great. I also use my personal camera as an NX500. Sorry, I'm talking shot. I'm going to shut up in a little bit. Sam, but Samsung, I know there's right? a Samsung NX500. That's 4K. What does that camera cost? That only cost the kit. It was a kit with a 16 to 50 lens, kit lens, zoom lens. Um, it only took about $600. Almost $700. $700. And I can shoot 4K and so it's pretty sweet, and we're shooting a 4K noir film. So yeah, uh, grid street. That's right. Yeah, I have my cards. You have your cards. Yeah, I'll do that. I'm a little shooter than you. I'm more the artist. Um, I'm an actor, and I make movies too. And and two, that because we're talking about uh, we make movies, and you can, uh, so can you. Um, I'm just gonna talk for a second. You can slap me and tell me to shut up if I go too long. But um. I started making movies because I'm an actor. And I was like, nobody wants to film me. <laughs> it's hard to get those auditions. It's hard to get in. You're nervous. You're not in that safe. They give you the weird part, the part you don't want, right? So I'm like, I want to be the lead. I want to do this. And so I just got a camera together. Like back in the day, it was like the video cameras or the. Anybody remember the Tyco Kids camera? Black and white only? Yes, record only on a VCR, you have to roll that sucker around. Yes, I started doing that, and I started just going, I'm going to make a movie. And me and my friends put together a little 40-minute film called GR, Genetic Regeneration. It was black and white, it was like, uh, I, I played the mad scientist. I was really a, a, the hero role, and I put my friend Trevor as the lead, and we made this little black and white film, and we did it, we got it done, and all the kids, I remember it was the greatest moment of my life, like I made a movie, I got it done, it probably, when you watch, I still have that today, I look at it, it's terrible, but I made it, but I remember the day when we showed it, was this feeling of like, wow, I did it, I made a film, we make movies, and so can you. Um, I made a movie, and I remember sitting in my house, and my house was literally standing room only, and all these people are looking around the square box TV, watching my movie that we made together as friends. And it was the most amazing moment in my life. And I still use that concept when I go out and make movies. I don't know if it's, I, well, I know, I'm just going to pretend like I don't know. I don't know if you're the same way about going out and making yeah. movies. Yes, I'm, I'm the opposite. I started and I thought, I'm going to make Indiana Jones 4, but it's called Indiana Jones and the Ancient Laser. And the Nazis have this device, this laser that controls the weather, and therefore they can. Uh, dominate Europe and the world, and I made the first. I made this movie three different times in high school, and the last version I only shot the first ten minutes. But the first, the first time I was in Indiana Jones, and I found it was very difficult for me to be in front of the camera and behind the camera at the same exact time. So I don't have that talent. Christian does, but I don't. Um, and then I realized I'm not really good on camera. I'm better at to just being quiet and sort of choking in the ear. And that's just weird in front of the camera. So behind me, we're totally wrong. Yes. Um, you're totally the supporter. You help us right. direct us. Conduct. Exactly. That's what I did. Yes. And I had my moment, sort of like yours. So for my senior year in 
high school, I had a high eight millimeter camera, a Sony handy cam, and I made a, a 70s style exploitation movie called West and Chester versus the Cocaine Dealing Thieves. Yes. And, um, <laughs> you should remake that movie. I am. People we'll have all them in Let's do it. Um, and so I get to show it uh, in class, and the principal was there. And before I showed up, she said, Is there anything inappropriate? I'm like, Well, <laughs> I said, well, there's, I mean, there's, there's, there's fake drugs, and she's like, uh, and I'm like, she's like, and I'm like, there's, uh, there's some guns, there's detectives, and that was a, that was a big deal. I wasn't allowed to show it. Um, that was after some, some events right. that had happened. Um, so what I did was, I worked really hard. As, I stayed up all night. I was, ups, I was kind of upset because that was a whatever. That's my own issue. It drove you. It drove me. So I had a screening at lunch, and everyone came to my house, and it was the same idea. Standing room only, right. we got a car jump, we're shooting and sort of crying. Shooting and yeah, don't, don't, don't cry. Sorry, it's just amazing. And I was in person. That was amazing. So that was my experience, is I thought, I, yeah, I want to I want to, I want to be the main character. Now I live vicariously. I write their dialogue and their thoughts. Yeah. And then I just, I yell at someone else and get mad at them when they, like hoping that they stick to the right. Exactly. Out of that. Any questions about that? About us just going out and making anybody similar trying to do that? Anybody like, oh, I want to try to make a movie? Does anybody have concerns? Sorry, I don't know how to do it. Is any? Yeah, as far as well, obviously as far as sanity. So but those great things. What's what's stopping anybody? Yeah. My question is, what do you do for promotion bids? Yeah. The trailers that, that fit the grass commercial market and present. I think I also get, I'll take that one and then you can join in. Yeah. I think I can speak for both of us, actually. Um, I think so. <laughs> Interrupt me. Um, when, I, when I'm making a movie, especially with, when I started, like a, a story I was telling you, I wasn't even thinking about promotions. I love making movies. And so I just made a movie and that was amazing. And then I made another one and the same thing happened. And I made another one and the same thing. It just kept on building up, building up getting us to that next step here but what happened was then I realized once we got I started showing things in the theater or I started showing things you know to the general public and I wanted to watch it or know about it the big thing was I think I forget uh maybe it was I was showing a movie in the theater and I remember nobody showed up it was just a small little showing that I didn't do any marketing okay I think this is I'm going this direction I'm trying to answer the question um, without, you know, anyway, so, um, and I showed this film, and nobody showed up, and I was like, oh, and I think venue, too, was the, the key thing, I forget where it was, but I remember nobody really showed up, and I was, like, bummed out by that. So then I made this, I remade, gosh, GR, I remade it in color now, with a cool digital age camcorder. Yeah, I'm on big time. <laughs> and... This is what happened. It was in the right place at the right time. This is going to answer it. looks like I'm going off here, but it's going to answer your question. Um, I helped out, uh, some of you might know, and I hope that he's here. I hope it's okay to say his name, but Andy Smith. Yeah, anybody know him? Okay. Um, I, he, I was working at, I'm still in, he's looking at me next to something. He comes in, and I'm helping him out when he's filming uh, or this little like piece he was doing. He was getting pictures at the time, digital pictures. And anyways, I helped him out, and he was working at the independent newspaper. And we started talking, and he found out I make a movie. And he's like, you need to put that in the newspaper. And all of a sudden, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I went to market it, see how I'm getting it. I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. I'm okay. <laughs> anyway, so. <sighs> um, I just get up and cue. No. Um, <laughs> and he's like, you know what? Um, I'll help you out. I'll see what I can do. That's all he said, right? That's a, that's a, that's a Andy. And if you know Andy, if some of you sound like you know Andy, really good person. You know, everybody here is really good. So, anyways, like uh, my movie's coming out at MCAT. We're showing it at MCAT in the studio theater. And all of a sudden, the I'm like, I want to see what he did. And I'm looking for the little ad. And I open up the thing, and there's like a big, huge like. My poster's there, and there's a picture, and there's a little write-up, and all the info I gave him, I had like a little like, well here, I had something written down, like this is what the movie's about, and he like told me to give him something. And all of a sudden, I had to do two showings that screen, and that changed my life forever because of marketing. 
That was my eye opener to marketing, like getting yourself out there. Did I do okay? Did yes. I do okay? And that was my education. I was like, totally, I was like, this works. You got to put yourself out there. You got to go talk to the paper and put out some money and stuff. And if you want to take it even more, make it oh. long enough. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, because I'm in the middle of this crowdfunding campaign, so marketing is what it's all about. <coughs> and I think having a good trailer, yes. I mean, the the proof of the pudding is the pudding, right? So you can talk about you can talk about how great a project is or it's good, this, that, and the other, but just showing people, you show them and it's right there, that's the end. There's no hiding a bad movie, you're gonna see it. I mean I guess I guess there there are big budget movies where the trailer's good and the movie isn't. But you at least know it's of a certain standard and quality from an aesthetic perspective, which means there's probably some talent involved. In other ways, it's a great segue. I'm not going to interrupt. Let's do it. Um, but what he's saying about he makes the trailer, that's what a lot of times I get. I'm kind of getting into like, I'm kind of segueing here a little bit about trailers. Is I would always make a trailer of my idea first. Instead of drawing, I would draw a picture or draw a poster idea and draw, and then I would make a little trailer with like a title. I'd edit something in. I wouldn't have actors. I might have myself doing something and do that quick teaser trailer. You know, like what you see nowadays, which is very common. You see Avengers, and it's just like uh, the name or the title and the music. You're like, oh, that's awesome. I'm going to go see that. But me, you know, it's us like, he's going to fall here, and they're like, what's that? I don't know who Christian Ackerman is. Who the heck is that? But I would show a trailer kind of showing what I want, the tonality of what I want to make. Right. And that's how I would get people involved in my film or get people excited, like even Andy or whatever, I'd show them a trailer. That's your pitch. That's your, that pitch. your pitch. And then get people like, oh, this guy, and it would, it's true what you were saying. The proof is in eating the pudding. I love it. It's so true. It's so true. <laughs> Sorry, um, I messed that up. But anyways, right. it is, yes, yes. You gotta eat it to know that it's bad or not, right? You gotta, you gotta try all the carrots and the peas. Anyway, so. I would show this little teasers, and that's how I would get people to come on board, and then slowly after we get the movie done, we, or get it kind of done like how you are right now, you're showing a trailer, even though your film's not done, just to show people like this is what we have so far, and this is where we're trying to go. That reminds me. That helps. That, helps. that reminds right. me of getting, people ask me, how do you get actors? I get exactly. that question all the time. Yes, me too. And it's sort of like, when people are going to put their time and effort into your project, they have to believe in the project, but also they have to believe in you, or at least your passion. Yes. At the very least. So you're selling yourself almost more than the project. And I found people come on board, and there are two paths that they take. The first, well, everyone, pretty much everyone, uh, starts the same way. Super excited. This is great. We're making a movie. We got prop guns or swords or whatever. And then it gets really boring because they discover that it's work. And it's not just. It's not making a movie. Isn't like watching a movie. It's, it's blood, sweat, and tears. It is passion. <coughs> and then people go through it, and you have this lull. And then you finish, and then they see the, the end product. And so people, when they see what you've done. Assuming it turns out, they come up to you immediately and say, "When's the next one?" And they're addicted. And now yeah. they know. And the, the other, the other half, they're like, "That was fun. I never want to do it again." <laughs> right. But that's, that's, so that's how you know. And the people that come back, they can count on them because they've been, they've been through all the different things and stuff with it. Yeah, and you have that camaraderie and that um, you get to know each other really well too. So oh, like, 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 that's how we got to know each other. And, how we got to know everybody we work with is you bring them back on and you also now as we're getting, we became adults we grew up John and, and now we do professional work too and we bring those people that we work with on our movies for play and also for our resumes we bring them on our professional shows right so that's really I mean in, uh, well our, our profession we are professional totally people. yeah so I'll answer this even though nobody asked asked it <laughs> more specific oh yes yeah, so just uh, go yes. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, how do you oh, okay. specifically how do you find yeah. actors? Oh, okay. great. Okay. Thank you. Um, um, go to just theater is a good place to start. And if there's a film industry, if you're from here, there's a tiny one. But most theater actors can do some film. They're going to be a little more over the top. But um, just like me, no spirit fingers, no jazz hands. We'll just tell them not to do that. Mm -hmm. So that's how. It's really just. I'm done talking about that. Do we have any more questions? Any more questions about the actor? Uh, what was your process on writing the script? Oh, great. That's a great question. I'll tell my own I, <laughs> that's, I'm shocked. I think it's been weird. 
here so far. I know, right? <laughs> um, so for me, in general, or this one specifically? Uh, in general, okay. and like how to like sell the script as well. Oh, good, good question. Yeah, that is a very good. So, if you're looking to get into writing, just get a uh, screenwriting app or software or you get for free. Oh, yeah. Celtics or something like this. Yeah. So, get the Screenwriter's Bible. It's the size of the script, and I'm showing you the exact formatting. It's updated every couple of years, and so that you know, because Hollywood goes through trends. Sometimes they like some this format, and then two years. So, if, if you're trying to sell your script, and a stack of scripts on a reader's desk. And they're going to look at it, and if it's formatted wrong, they're not going to do it. Exactly. Yeah. So I've not sold the script, so I can't tell you how this can be figured out for yourself. Do it manually, tell me. But I will say, um, if you have that book and the software formats it for you, that's your start right there. Right. So personally, I have an old typewriter, electric typewriter, and I call it my, what is it? My consciousness train of thought capturing device. And I just, wow. in the morning, I write in the morning for one hour, and I just let it all out, no backspace, nothing. And then the next day, or a couple of days later, I'll go back and put it in the computer. But for me, the thing is like too critical when I initially write it. I'm just, I'm gonna, I'll, be, I'll stifle myself, I won't take it in there. So that's my Mine, I sort of, I get it, I love the moleskin. I grab the moleskin, I put it down, I open it up, and I write, or whatever I can and draw, too. And I draw, and so my scripts are so, like how you've seen me today, all over the place. I, I'll i start to write, and I'll be writing a scene, and it turns out my hand and my penmanship is really beautiful and nice, and then all of a sudden, if I get a good idea, it becomes like Doc Brown writing. Like, and then I'm like, woo, and I can't describe it, so I draw pictures, and I draw storyboards, and then you, I have this huge like binder of images and stuff sticking out, and all of a sudden that's my script. And then I take that, that's like my capture device. There's some more steam coming, I like that. But, uh, <laughs> but um, <laughs> mine, I'm just like, oh, oh, it means something. No, um, but I, <laughs> I, so then I take that, and then I sit in the computer and with Celtics or whatever screenwriting program, and I write it and make it look legit so people can understand that crazy gibberish, so we can all be on the same page. And they can know, like, oh, that's what I'm saying. That's what's happening in the scene. Thank you, Christian, for what is this? To yeah, it's like my, my brain to form like a formal dance or something like that. So crazy punk rock mosh pit to that, and that's how I do it. And then I'm the same way. We we print it out and then we change things as we're going, like we were talking about earlier. And I use the classic Act One, Act Two, Act Three. I love that. It's so 80s to me. So I always have a big boss at the end. I mean, it's like a video game. Yeah, I start up, I set up, I intro, I do some attention getter, and I go through. And that's kind of my process. And I, and I come up with characters. And I just write. I just write. Because we really, writers don't know what they're doing. I mean, well, okay, I don't want to speak for everybody, the novelists, the people out here that write novels and stuff, but screenwriting, um, I, I heard a, a quote, but I, I'm not going to say it's a quote. It is from a screenwriter. We, you, it's art. There's no real wrong or right way, but when you're showing it to other people, like you were saying it, like they will throw it out. If they like look like you don't know what you're doing, they'll, I've seen it happen, actually, so on jobs and stuff. So, but um, really, what me, you and I have done, I think I can speak for you, is we'll write a script and we show it to our actors, the ones that are coming back and stuff like that, and they'll look at it and be like, oh, this is great, I love, I love this. And even some of them will be like, oh good, I have a lot of lines or whatever, but um, they can, they'll look at it and then it gets us, it's a kind of a technical tool just to get us all on the same page so we can create our art. And that's kind of my process, so. What about beta readers and viewers? You guys, how do you incorporate that or do you? We have, just so you know, we have two minutes, so we gotta make this quick. Oh, we gotta make this quick. We gotta make quick and then do an outro. Okay, we'll do an outro. I do hand parts. <laughs> so, do we, oh, are you going to ask Oh, listen, listen, your hand parts like I've derailed everything. It's a very light brain. It's more like, oh, I'm ready to go. I have some food. No. Um, I, I don't. I don't. I, I, I'll answer this. You, you go. Ahead. I, I, I do what I will, and I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to have. I do what I will, and I'll. 
right now? Go! Right now. So, um, do it. <laughs> and maybe if I have something else. I work on it, I get it to where I can show it, and I'm happy to not embarrassed by it, you know, it's a rough cut. Right. And then I'm going to have some screenings at the theater here with just an intimate group of people that I trust and know will give kind of constructive criticism, not, uh, not, not the opposite. Um, and I'm going to do that, I'll make revisions, and I'll do them like a second time, and then after two, I think I'll probably be dialed in. So yeah. that's, that's my project. Also, password protected streaming online if people are out of town. There's some people who they really value. They're not here. They need to watch it. Right. They get some feedback via email. Um, I show it to my wife, and I, just, I actually lock him away in the, in, in the office. Yeah. I, lock, I have him come down and go, watch it. He sits there with his, his notes or whatever. And he, Watching it because you're very the critical. The pen of death. Yes, and he's good, but I know I can trust him. Does this make me look bad? Yes. Crap. <laughs> <Don't, laughs> yeah. It's all for love, right? Right. So, the last thing I want to say is we are doing a crowdfunding campaign. Amazon DVDs, Blu rays, all the, all the typical fun stuff. Um, the movie will be screened next year in Missoula. We're going to have the premiere at the Wilma Theater. Um, and in the meantime, on June 18th, we are shooting our final scene, which is a zombie scene. And we have, as a reward to part of our crowdfunding campaign, it's going to be zombie. There's three tiers of zombie. A background featured hero, hero zombie, in yeah. full makeup by Nina, right there. Nina Corpus. And uh, we also need some zombie slayers. And so if you go to MizzouBoo.com, there's that, and you can get premiere tickets. You know, check it out. It'd be nice to have some support. Also, if you want to talk later, we're both going to be hanging out. We're going to have this matchup up in the lobby, right where you come in the door. Anyone wants to come ask questions later? You guys probably saw us. I'm going to take a picture of all of you. Yeah, that's right. I forgot. I'll just be here like this. <laughs> yeah, and we have, he has business cards up here. I have business cards. We're always looking for actors or any help we can get. So, whatever it is, you're a painter or a construction worker, you do cosplay. It all works, whatever it is, sewing, anything, drawing, whatever, writing, let us know, take our cards, get in contact with us. We're on Facebook and every, Google us, Google our names. All right, all right. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank you very much. This program was produced in whole or in part with equipment and facilities provided by Missoula Community Access Television.